And what's up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. It is your friend, Sheep Ludes. I was going to say that it is a glorious day in NBA 2K23, my team, but I think it's just kind of a normal day, but we got content, but I'm feeling extra, I don't know, loving today, being my cherished Philadelphia Eagles are going to another Super Bowl. Not only are we going to a Super Bowl, we get to play Andy Reid, who's about to get the work and we took out a bosa along the way oh it's just a good day man everything's good we have galactic conqueror spotlight sims that's what we're going to talk about today interesting we've been asking for this all year so this is this is pretty huge i must say complete five challenges versus each franchise during 30 diamond captains so it looks like it's going back to the way 2k20 spotlights were handled as opposed to like 2k21 or 2k22 which i think is good personally um i liked that style i don't know if it's going to be as grind intensive i'm hoping that it's purely offline so it gives offline people something to do but i guess we'll we'll find out i'm just hoping i don't have to go online and like you know win specific agenda challenges and stuff like that i'm hoping that's not the case but it's kind of unclear the way they worded it. They kept it kind of intentionally vague. So either way, it should be fun regardless. I mean, we got our first, you know, like sample size of the cards. You know, we got our Sixers guy, Tobias Harris, which unsurprising as far as the Sixers, not shocked. OG and Anobi, Jason Kidd, Antoine Walker, and Mitchell Robinson. I feel like Mitchell Robinson was, was 2K22. I feel like they gave us a diamond Mitchell Robinson. I'm stoked for Antoine Walker. Now, I will say some reused assets like Diamond Jason Kidd and Diamond OG again are kind of, I don't know. I just feel like there was other players for those franchises that could have gotten a card. Like, why couldn't it have been like Diamond Carry Kittles or something? You know what I mean? We didn't need another Jason Kidd. We didn't need another Diamond OG either. Like, it could have been someone else. That's, that's all I'm trying to say there. OG will be fire, by the way, but it could have been some other Toronto Raptors player. It really could have. I don't know. That's just me, though. It doesn't really matter at the end of the day. It could have been Bosch, honestly. I mean, who cares, though? It's still good. We got some content. I'm trying not to be negative, but I'm also trying to uh, be objective. If there's some positives, I'm going to talk about them. If there's some negatives, I'm going to talk about them. This and the possible difficulty are probably the only negatives here. You know, standing up against a tidal wave of positives. So, collect all the diamonds for a division to select a pink diamond version of a captain so the way this looks to me also we're getting diamond miles turner who will be fire and diamond del curry so that's it this basically means each division after you collect all five cards you get to pick one of those five cards and that card becomes a pink diamond or you get a pink diamond version of that card i think it's kind of more likely what's happening i don't think it's an evil there's no evil star so i'm assuming you just get to pick hey you get a pink diamond out of one of these guys so that's going to be cool that adds a little bit of custom of like customization to it too so it's like you know you might pick a player because they're meta you might pick a player because you like that player like i'm probably gonna pick diamond jason or pink diamond jason kid just because it's funny you know what i mean um nick's fans probably gonna pick mitchell robinson i wonder who the bulls are gonna select uh it's probably gonna be patrick williams actually is probably who it's gonna be I don't think it'll be DeRozan, but like Patrick Williams makes a lot of sense. I wouldn't be shocked unless they go with like an old school player. Ben Gordon's always on the table too. They love giving Ben Gordon out as a reward. Praying for Pink Diamond Kirk Heinrich, but it's all good. This would be the time to drop Oster Tag, by the way. Just gonna just gonna say that. Um, then we get the Galaxy Opal after you complete both of them. So it's very. This is like a better version of like the trophy case. Kyrie and Wiggins. Wiggins will be gassed, but I don't know if he'll really even be better than, like, a Dr. J, but he'll still be good. You know, and it'll be a lot less work to get. And then Kyrie will be Kyrie. It'll be all right. He's a small point guard. And then you get Garnett. Garnett will be pretty fire. Like, Garnett will be pretty solid. So let's take a look at some of these guys here, like, that we already have, or at least that we know. So we got Garnett. Garnett's got his own release. I don't think they juice him, like, the way they juice pack players what i'm saying is they'll probably give him kevin garnett release on quicker very quick um and he'll just be a much much better version of this card i mean obviously i would say same for probably kyrie irving I, I don't think there's really any way to go about that you just put kyrie's release on very quick 
kind of juice his sigs up a little bit, make him a much better player, especially defensively. That's probably what they do in regards to that. Wiggins and OG the same way. Wiggins was gas, so was OG, though. OG was really good when he came out. Like, OG was fire. He was, like, one of... Not the first Tuesday player that was really good. I think Wiggins was, like, the first one that I was, like, really excited about. But OG was so good. I have no idea how to spell his name, by the way. Which which I should probably just look since he's right here. It's Anu. Duh. But he was really good when he came out. Because he had that Michael Jordan dribble style, that OG release on quick. OG was fire when he came out. He just needed badges. So this card is going to be good. A lot of people are going to pick OG for that exact reason. But then we got some wild cards. Like Miles Turner, for instance. Like People hated that release when they were trying to do that challenge. But a lot of that came from having to use the gold player. But 6'11", 7'4", wingspan. Like he's kind of fast. He can kind of shoot. He can kind of facilitate. He can kind of do a little bit of everything. Miles might be that guy. Like, he might sneakily be one of the better cards in this entire set. I'm just going to say that. Uh, Del Curry's release is kind of whack, but it's going to be really interesting. I'm excited, personally, for this because, A, it gives me an offline grind. And, B, it's like, it's just something else. You know what I mean? It's something else that we can do. I, I just, I'm excited in general, man. Now, does this cause any type of ripples within the market or anything? I don't know. We don't, we won't really know that until we start to see the cards come out tomorrow and start to see their sigs. Like, I don't know, I don't think Garnett really affects Dirk too much. I feel like most people have played my team for long enough to kind of understand that, like, reward cards typically do not affect the market. Now, the one way that we could see the market be affected really easily is if they force us to use players from those teams that is really a possibility also so my recommendation for sure just to be on the safe side would be to pick up cheap players from teams that are typically harder to fill out um those teams would be like the clippers so like someone like maurice taylor it's worth you know spending 1800 to pick up a maurice taylor just so you have that clippers guy for sure um karan butler i guess jason terry would be another good option because dallas is kind of hard to fill out sometimes if you can get him for a good enough price, he's worth picking up. Guys like that. You know, Roy Hibbert is a good option as well. The Sixers are usually fine, honestly. Lamar Odom is kind of expensive, so I wouldn't recommend going and stretching Lamar Odom. But, you know, just guys of that nature. You know, teams that are harder to fill out, you're going to want to look for guys that are going to match those teams and just kind of go from there and just hope for the best. Stroh Mile with Memphis. I don't know. The Grizzlies have been really good, so they've been giving out a lot of Grizzlies players. So Terrence Ross is a good one. Uh, Mo Peterson's out there as well. Just kind of look at stuff like that. Um, anyone that's going to have either a position or a team in general that's going to be tough to fill out. Like Russ, picking up this Russ is going to be a good idea the rockets are typically a hard team to fill out they usually have like a few top tier options that are really really good and then a few cards that kind of not necessarily aren't so good but just are cheaper there's the, there's a big wealth gap for the rockets like there's like your yows and your t-max that are always like super expensive and then there's like everybody else you know what i mean thankfully i got an unauctionable t-mac i guess so whatever but you're going to want to look for cards like that just to be on the safe side you know, Simbular for the Kings. The Kings usually don't have a lot of good big men. Stuff like that. Also, not a terrible idea to look in kind of the more recent uh, seasons. Like the selects and things like that. You can find a lot of players to fill out rotations that are like decent enough that you could beat the CPU with. Now, the challenges themselves are going to be the interesting thing. I want to know exactly what they're going to do with these. Because if they do them in the 2K20 style, I think they'll be sick. Like, those will be so fun. But it's just a matter of if they do them in that style. Because if they don't, and they force us to do it through, like, an agenda group instead, that's going to open us up to a lot more, like, having to go play online, forcing us to go do certain things to get these cards, and that's going to be rough. Why I think they're going to make these strictly offline challenges is based on the players that I see. Like, none of these players are guys that are extremely gate kept in any way shape or form so we're not seeing any 
super high tier guys like a taco or something of that nature that they might try to like gatekeep behind like a harder challenge these are all guys that are pretty like i would say casual friendly from a name perspective like garnett is up there but i don't think garnett's like a pack seller or somebody that they usually lock behind these things so it's going to be interesting i'm assuming we're going to get more news like kind of as the day goes along but the only reason i made this video right now is just because like 2k likes to do this stuff they'll drop this like banger and then decide to just like not talk about it for the rest of the day until it comes out like they do this all the time so it is what it is another thing i wanted to bring up here i'm gonna talk about it when i stream in a second too but uh 2k's news that they put out so they tweeted today PSA, if you bought my team points in 2K23, you will be temporarily banned for 10 calendar days. Key, if you bought. Past tense. That's interesting. Repeat offenders face a 30 calendar ban, followed by a permanent account ban. See the 2K terms of service, blah, 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 blah. Okay. Here's the thing. A, the language that they chose, you could look at it and be like, all right. They, uh... They just misspoke, but I've, I've said it for a while that I think it's a little bit easier to track people buying MT than I think people who buy MT think. Like, it's super duper easy to track. Like, you can just run bots that flag suspicious transactions on the marketplace. Like, some of them you don't really need a bot to even do. I mean, there's been times, I mean, dude, it, right in front of me. Right in front of me, the highest auction house sale yesterday was a Himadu Diallo for 15 million MT. That's the largest of all time. That's crazy. It's not exactly shocking that they would drop that after this uh, Diallo situation. Like, this is brazen to a level I've never seen before. You know, we'll see like a Del Curry for 5 million and stuff, and those are very brazen, but this is 15 million MT sold on a Diallo yeah that's kind of crazy so in the past they've essentially gone after like mt suppliers uh historically speaking and just been like you know what this is what we're going to do we're going to tackle anyone promoting mt we're going to tackle any account suspected of mt farming they decided apparently at some point this year that they're like nope we're going to attack the people who buy mt directly if you buy mt you're getting banned straight up which is how uh, historically not how they've done it before and I'll be honest, I just, this is part of the reason I never did it, because I just always expected them to do this at some point. And I figured I have the worst luck of all time, so the minute I would even consider doing it, they'll do something like this. It's telling that they made a tweet, though, and came out and said this, especially right before this grind, too. The reason I think that this has something to do with the grind, by the way, is they put this tweet out and then they drop this galactic conqueror's grind which leads me to believe that you're probably going to need players from those franchises to complete the challenges so i don't know and we'll see how this works i mean we'll see when the ban hammers drop but it's it's worth going to look at your collections and just seeing like okay how how good is my 10 man rotation for each team because i don't think they would go full 13 on the teams but 10 is something they've done a lot this year so it's worth going and being like, okay, I can use three players that are not from that team, but like, how good is my other seven? And when you start seeing teams where you're struggling to put together a seven that you think you can win like Hall of Fame games on, that's where I would be like, okay, maybe it's worth going to pick up a few guys that are cheaper that can like improve your chances, you know? Like, let me find a team that's rough. The Clippers are rough, but I have a decent seven man because I picked up Mo Taylor out the pack, so it was like the only thing I pulled so like i have a, a couple of okay dudes that i could run here you know no biggie there the heat are usually traditionally a harder team to put together they've given us some decent amount of like heat players this year so that's cool the hornets are always kind of tough as well but, but if you got like alonzo morning and like glenn rice larry johnson like terry eddie jones like, i got a decent little starting five right here that i could run if i needed to you know what I mean? Jazz are always pretty tough, but if you got like Lowry Markinen, like Stockton, Thurl Bailey from grinding, like you got a decent three, you might have to run Ricky Green for a little bit, which isn't ideal, but it's better than nothing. We're gonna have to use a lot of dynamic duos to get this done, by the way. Kings are tough. They've been giving out 
a lot of ting there are a lot of tings cards <laughs> a lot of kings cards this year um the mavericks are usually one of the toughest if you're not able to afford like dirk and luca you're usually sol as far as the mavericks go because it's not like they ever give high tier like rolando blackman or like they do give high tier finley cards as rewards but like van exel like blackman like adrian griffin jim jackson popeye jones got one last year like these guys kleber they typically don't get high tier cards so this team is already looking quite rough dude it's looking like we're running sapphire michael finley in the starting shooting guard role which is real sus i do not like that you know what i mean other teams are like the nets are kind of hard sometimes but they've been getting a lot of reward players nuggets players have been expensive my nuggets team is pretty trash pelicans are always super tough to get like my pelicans team sucks and i would be willing to wager most people's pelicans theme team sucks super bad so you know there's a lot going on there um as always it's been your friend cheap Luth. you know i'll be live tomorrow when this drops i'm excited about it we're still probably getting super packs with evos tomorrow by the way don't expect packs i would be like i would be stoked if they came out and said yo we're bringing back tuesday packs like that'd be cool but i would expect another set of vc only super packs with evos so anyways have a do have a good day yeah have a good day forgot what i was gonna say there not really sure shout out to the eagles man go birds dude can't wait to take down patrick mahomes and his wife dog